Established at the onset of World War II, Hill Air Force Base grew into its present-day significance, starting with the attack on Pearl Harbor. First known as Hill Field, this installation served as an integral maintenance and supply depot during the war and continued to perform these primary functions for more than 80 years. Throughout this time, Hill Air Force Base evolved, becoming home to numerous military units accomplishing critical missions, supporting our warfighter at home and abroad. These missions have and continue to play an essential role in supporting not just the Air Force and its airmen, but all branches of service, our allied partners, and America's position in preserving human rights across the globe. This installation traces its beginnings to Lieutenant Colonel Hap Arnold, a pioneering airman who learned to fly from the Wright brothers, obtained the rank of General of the Air Force, the first such commission ever granted, and who ultimately paved the way for an independent Air Force. Before many of these accomplishments occurred, Arnold commanded the Army Air Corps' Western Air Mill Zone, based out of Salt Lake City Airport in 1934. Even though the Salt Lake City Airport was no more than a grass patch with a runway, and there were no other Air Corps installations in the state, Arnold was impressed with the surrounding region to include the area that is now Hill Air Force Base. He felt this region's optimal climate for aircraft maintenance, flying, and material storage, as well as its geographical position, made it an ideal central location for transcontinental movements and protection from possible enemy coastal attack. Bottom line, he saw great potential for the establishment of a permanent Air Corps supply and repair depot in this area of the country, which laid the foundational vision for Hill Air Force Base. A year earlier, in 1933, the Nazi Party and Adolf Hitler came to power in Germany. With this political transition, Germany began an open and aggressive rearmament campaign eventually building itself into a powerful war machine. Concerned for its own preparations for war, Congress passed the Wilcox-Wilson Act on August 12, 1935, which authorized the Secretary of War to determine the location of permanent Air Corps stations, one of which was to be in the Rocky Mountain region. Soon after its passage, Hap Arnold, Army Air Corps officials, and congressmen visited several mountain locations to inspect possible depot sites. During their visit to Utah, the Military Affairs Committee of the Ogden Chamber of Commerce showed the party a site south of Ogden that made an impression on the group. This location provided choice flight approaches from all directions, had adequate water and good drainage, was close to Ogden, and was near a spur of the main line of the Union Pacific Railroad. These favorable conditions, along with the effective advocacy efforts of Utah's elected officials and Hap Arnold's positive view of the area, made the decision to place a depot in this area an easy one. Ogden was going to be home to the planned Rocky Mountain Depot. On November 26, 1938, President Roosevelt authorized the initial expenditure of $55,000 to begin construction of runways on land adjacent to the Ogden Arsenal. The country was still recovering from the Great Depression, so members of the Works Progress Administration built these first foundational elements of the forthcoming depot. The next major milestone occurred on January 12, 1939, when President Roosevelt delivered a special message to Congress warning that changing world conditions would make it imperative that the U.S. take steps to ensure the nation's defense. With the President's cautionary message, the major steps needed to prepare for the pending war occurred quickly, soon bringing the Air Corps mission to this region with great speed and impact. In April of 1939, President Roosevelt signed Public Law 18, permitting the procurement of 6,000 aircraft and the commencement of new, robust flight training, the greatest resource increased to Air Corps to date, to assist in protecting the nation's interest. The U.S. government also acquired 2,967 acres in Davis County for what was now being called the Ogden Air Depot. Shortly thereafter, Congress moved to appropriate the funding needed for bases that would be required to support the pending war, including $8 million for the establishment and construction of the Ogden Air Depot. President Roosevelt also signed into law the National Defense Act, 
that selected the proposed Ogden Air Depot as a principal Army Air Corps logistical supply point, with planned activities including receiving, storing, and supplying air materiel as well as aircraft maintenance and repair. At Hap Arnold's direction, the site of the Air Corps New Depot Command was officially named Hill Field on December 1, 1939. The field was named after Major Ployer Pete Hill, a dear friend of Hap Arnold and an Army test pilot who was killed on October 30, 1935, while testing the Boeing Model 299, a pre-production model of the B-17 Flying Fortress at Wright Field near Dayton, Ohio. Officials from the Ogden Chamber of Commerce, along with leaders from the Works Progress Administration and the nearby Ogden Arsenal, participated in groundbreaking ceremonies for Hill Field on January 12, 1940. The day of the ceremony, Utah encountered its worst snowstorm in 50 years, but that did not stop the formal groundbreaking activities. The first commanding officer of Ogden Air Depot Hill Field was Colonel Morris Berman, who arrived on November 7, 1940, the date usually given as Hill Air Force Base's activation. Hill was sparsely manned at the time Colonel Berman took command, but by December 1941, he oversaw operations for 1,600 civilians and approximately 250 military personnel. From these humble beginnings, Hillfield grew to a thriving installation that played a crucial role in depot maintenance, repair, overhaul, supply, and training. Essential to the aircraft maintenance missions were repairs hangars numbers one through four, a large complex consisting of four hangars that are still in use today. Instead of receiving all repairs at one dock, an assembly line system was set up to move aircraft through successive stations for specialized repair in these hangars. Workers skilled in particular aspects of repair could perform more effectively. The efficiency and success of the assembly line at Hill soon attracted nationwide attention. In December 1943, the Army Times published an article describing the first progressive assembly line for B-24s in the war. These lines worked with such great efficiency they were able to completely refurbish one war-weary bomber each day. The shops also rehabilitated numerous other types of aircraft, including the B-17, B-26, P-40, P-47, and AT-11. Tens of thousands of state-of-the-art aircraft components were repaired at Hill Field as well. To include a myriad of aircraft engines and unique instruments, such as the vital Norton bombsite. From its humble, far-sighted beginning, Ogden Air Depot strength grew to a World War II peak of 22,000 plus employees, comprised of approximately 16,000 civilians and 6,000 military personnel. To support this workforce, several communities sprung up to support the effort, some that still exist today. For example, one of the communities developed in Ogden and was named Washington Terrace. This temporary community increased the size of the city as workers flooded to the state to support the war effort on new Utah military installations like Hill Field. As the war progressed, other missions were added to operations at Hill Field. Several sub-depots were established under the administration of this installation. Sub-Depot 317, located at Wendover Army Air Base, the precursor to what is now the Utah Test and Training Range, activated on April 25, 1942. Wendover Field's primary mission was to train heavy B-17 and B-24 bombardment groups, as well as facilitate weapons testing and training. Total, 21 bomber groups and over 1,000 air crews completed training at Wendover Airfield. One of the most recognized units to train at Wendover Airfield was the 509th Composite Group. This unit trained B-29 bomber air crews in special weapons delivery skills eventually used to drop the atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Many now know this unit for their use of modified B-29s known as silver plates and names of their aircraft such as the Enola Gay and Boxcar. With rapid post-war demobilization, uncertainties existed about Hillfield's future. However, demobilization kept Hillfield viable post-World War II. 
Immediately after the conflict, the Army Air Forces tasked Hill Field with disposing of excess materials and storing aircraft because of Utah's seasonal conditions proved favorable for storage and depot personnel were equipped for these tasks. Driving this need, for example, was the Army's now excess 12,000 aircraft. Throughout 1946 and 1947, Hill Field prepared hundreds of B-29s, A-26s, and PT-13s for storage. Hill's workforce carried out preservation treatment of aircraft in hangars one through four, and then these planes were stored in long, uniform rows on the east side of the flight line to wait for the next call to duty or disposal. By August 1947, Hill Field had 1,214 aircraft in storage. In addition to storing aircraft, maintenance workers at Hill converted B-29s to F-13s and B-17s to F-9s. Repair shops also serviced the AT-11, AT-6, and P-61. Hillfield's maintenance and supply workforce, although reduced by demobilization after World War II's end, performed an essential interwar role. It was during this period that the National Security Act of 1947 created the independent United States Air Force as a separate military branch. Consequently, Hillfield became Hill Air Force Base on February 5, 1948. While Hillfield became Hill Air Force Base and busied itself with disposing, storing, repairing, and modifying excess material, a new and different type of war emerged on the hills of World War II. The end of fighting changed global power dynamics. Previous major world powers, Japan and Germany, were defeated and the intense fighting in Europe significantly weakened France and Britain. With traditionally dominant nations heavily impacted by this conflict, the United States and Soviet Union rose to fill the power vacuum. Even though allies during the war, the United States did not trust the Soviet Union's dictator, Joseph Stalin. An ideological divide opened up between the United States and the Soviet Union. Each powerful nation espoused a different model for how to protect freedom, promote social justice, and ensure security. For the United States, that model hinged on capitalism. For the Soviet Union, communism defined the ideal society. Each nation wanted to shape the post-war world in its image. The language that developed in this vacuum shaped U.S. policy that grew into what we now know as the Cold War. In 1946, American diplomat George Kennan developed the idea of containment. According to Kennan, communism could not survive unless it spread. Eastern Europe already fell under the influence of the Soviet Union, but the United States had to contain the spread of communism beyond Eastern Europe. British Prime Minister Winston Churchill declared in a speech in 1946 that an iron curtain of communism was descending across the face of Europe. From these diverging paths of thought, the Korean conflict began, providing America the first test to its containment policy and shooting life back into Hill Air Force Base, fully reviving its crucial role in maintenance, repair, overhaul, supply, and training. Starting with this new Cold War conflict, Hill's mission began to grow and shift significantly during the 1950s and 1960s. Jet aircraft and advanced missile systems meant expanded responsibilities and new priorities for the base. Workload and personnel strength on Hill Air Force Base diminished substantially after World War II, but then started to increase with the rising tensions in Korea in June 1950. Hill's revival, triggered by the Korean War, required the construction of new hangars, runways, storage and repair facilities. The need for more space led to the acquisition of Ogden Arsenal on April 1, 1955, nearly doubling the base's physical size. A primary Hill workload at this time was named Project Holdoff, a logistical effort to support the Korean conflict with B-26s and B-29s removed from local storage renovated, modified, and added to the active inventory. Supply workers found themselves just as busy as their maintenance counterparts. By July 1950, supply ramped up its schedule to operate on a 12-hour day, seven days a week. More workers and longer hours were required to meet the wartime demand. 
In 1947, during peacetime, Hill's supply personnel shipped and received 149,000 tons of materials. Subsequently, in 1951, that amount increased to 2.14 million tons. By 1953, supply personnel shipped and received 2.18 million tons out of Hill Air Force Base. The installation also began its support for jet aircraft depot repair and program management at the onset of the Cold War. Hundreds of F-84s, F-89s, F-101s, and F-102s were returned to fly and fight service throughout the world because of the work accomplished on this installation. With the use of the atomic bomb several years prior, defensive strategies were evolving during the time. War was changing and Hill Air Force Base began its role of supporting the new and expanding nuclear platforms as this modern threat moved from bombers to intercontinental ballistic missiles, commonly called ICBMs. ICBMs moved to center stage as containment of communism was a priority in the democratic Western world. Foremost to local ICBM missions, Hill Air Force Base entered into intercontinental ballistic missile support with the Minuteman ICBM in 1959 as the world entered the age of nuclear deterrence. Hill was selected to manage the Air Force's new Minuteman ICBM because its recent, seasoned history with nuclear missile development. This history started in the mid to late 50s when Hill became prime maintenance manager for the MB-1 Genie nuclear rocket. Later, the installation assumed program management responsibilities for the Navajo and Bomark missiles, both nuclear platforms as well. In October 1959, America's first land-based, nuclear-tipped intercontinental ballistic missile went on round-the-clock alert. It was an Air Force Atlas D model missile at Vandenberg Air Force Base, California, and it was powered by liquid propellant that required the slow process of fueling the weapon system before launch. However, by mid-1958, the Department of Defense awarded Utah-based companies Thiaco and Hercules research and development contracts for what was then the revolutionary, solid-propellant-fueled Minuteman ICBM that could launch at a moment's notice. It made sense, then, that the Ogden Air Material Area at Hill Air Force Base was tagged with logistics management responsibility for the Minuteman ICBM on January 6, 1959. In addition to Hill's nuclear missile support history, helping to facilitate this decision was local private weapon system support. Thiokol Chemical Company constructed a solid propellant rocket plant 27 miles west of Brigham City. Hercules Powder Company, west of Salt Lake City, provided solid propellant production. Having both of these entities in close proximity to Ogden aided in the decision to build the Minuteman at Hill. Air staff eventually approved $11 million to construct the plant needed to build the Minuteman on Hill Air Force Base. Shortly thereafter, the Minuteman production complex was built on the west side of the base. In 1962, the first production model of the Minuteman shipped, a monumental milestone in the history of nuclear warfare. This weapon system went through several variations, with the last produced a Minuteman III, leaving Hill Air Force Base on December 1, 1978. ICBMs were not the only munitions Hill Air Force Base managed. In 1960, Air Force Munitions Depot operations consolidated at Hill Air Force Base under the 2705th Air Munitions Wing to include Explosive Ordnance Disposal, otherwise known as EOD. The latter became the sole agent for the entire United States Air Force in the Zone of Interior to perform reconnaissance, detection, recovery, field evaluation, and safe disposal of all U.S. and overseas exploded ordnance and explosives, including special weapons, biological, and chemical warfare weapons. These two missions have continued in some form throughout the years. Hill Air Force Base still stores large amounts of air munitions, and today these weapons are managed by the 649th Munitions Squadron. This unit's mission revolves around standard air munitions packages, otherwise known as STAMP, which requires placing bombs, missiles, and bullets onto aircraft pallets for shipment via cargo aircraft to warfighters around the globe. The EOD missions still exist on Hill Air Force Base through the 775th Explosive Ordnance Disposal Flight. This unit, like its predecessor, 
has the mission to safely and efficiently detect, disarm, detonate, and dispose of explosive threats wherever they exist, both at home and abroad. As the Cold War progressed, Hill's involvement with the Vietnam War started early in the conflict. The B-26, which had served in both World War II and Korea, was once again pulled out of storage, overhauled by Hill workers, and shipped to Vietnam for use by the South Vietnamese. That same year, President Kennedy established the Air Force Systems Command, which reduced the number of air material areas from nine to four. Having avoided closure, Hill's workload significantly increased from 1965 to 1968 from the President's decision. During this decade, Hill Air Force Base gained System Program Manager and maintenance duties for the F-4, a new fighter that would play a crucial role in Vietnam. Hill also began providing extensive munition and depot support for the F-101 Voodoos and F-102 Delta Daggers that served in this conflict. In fact, maintainers would sometimes leave Hill Air Force Base and fly into Vietnam combat zones to fix aircraft, such as the F-101. While Hill maintenance workers prepared these jet aircraft to return to battle, supply workers kept a steady flow of items moving to Vietnam. To alleviate overwork at other bases, the Military Airlift Command, or MAC, began direct airlift support from Hill to bases in Southeast Asia. On March 3, 1966, the first MAC-operated C-124 left Hill for Vietnam, loaded with air munitions. C-124s loaded with supplies departed Hill Air Force Base three days a week on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Shortly thereafter, C-130s and C-133s took off from Hill with air munitions bound for Southeast Asia. In March 1966 alone, nearly 200 tons of materiel left this Utah base for Vietnam. Overall, the base transported 20 million pounds of materiel to support the Air Force's role in this conflict. As the case with previous decades when Hill entered the 1970s, its mission continued to diversify and grow. Early in the decade, Hill was selected as one of six satellite alert bases for Strategic Air Command, or SAC operations. Then, in January 1973, Detachment 1 of the 456th Bombardment Wing activated on Hill Air Force Base. At the end of the year, the first of four B-52 bombers assigned to the 456th arrived at Hill. Also from the operational side of the Air Force, the 508th Tactical Fighter Group, a U.S. Air Force Reserve Unit activated at Hill Air Force Base in 1973 and was assigned the F-105 mission. This unit would later redesignate as the 419th Tactical Fighter Wing and is now known as the 419th Fighter Wing, still operating on Hill Air Force Base today. However, the most notable addition to Hill Air Force Base in its mission during the 1970s involved the new fourth generation fighter that would become the backbone of the Air Force fighter fleet for nearly 40 years. Operationally, it started in 1975 when the base became the new home to the 388th Tactical Fighter Wing as the unit ended its distinguished combat service in Southeast Asia. This unit was later selected as the first combat unit to receive the new F-16 Fighting Falcon. By 1979, the 388th was the nation's first active duty F-16 combat wing. Later, the 419th Tactical Fighter Wing became the first reserve unit to fly the F-16 after they transitioned from the F-105 on Hill. Occurring parallel to these F-16 combat operation mission taskings, in December 1976, Hill Air Force Base received system program management and depot maintenance responsibilities for the F-16. Hill became all things F-16. While Hill Air Force Base no longer has operational F-16 units, the installation still provides depot maintenance and engineering
additional conflict known as the Persian Gulf War. It is not the United States against Iraq. It is Iraq against the world. Hills Ogden Air Logistics Center and many tenant units supported Operation Desert Shield and Storm at the onset of the conflict. All maintenance shifts were extended to meet the demand on all supported weapon systems. In terms of combat operations, Hill's 3D8 fighter wing and 419th fighter wing, then called tactical fighter wings, flew combat missions in Desert Storm and Shield. After that conflict, these units went on to support Operation Southern and Northern Watch. Both post-war operations required the monitoring and controlling of airspace in Southern and South Central Iraq from the end of the Persian Gulf War until the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Hill Air Force Base performed an immense and diverse mission workload as our Middle Eastern presence evolved into a concentrated effort to fight the global war on terrorism. To bring focus to the fight, installation leaders adopted the term Team Hill to communicate its singular civil military effort for a strong national defense. At the depot, the workforce implemented numerous programs to ensure legacy aircraft such as the F-16s, A-10s, and C-130s remained a viable part of the Air Force fleet as the base supported Operation Iraqi Freedom, Operation Enduring Freedom, and the many other conflicts occurring in the Middle East. The depot also supported software, electronics, and commodities maintenance. During these heightened operations, Hill started maintenance on the F-22 Raptor in April 2006. This was not the only noteworthy addition to Hill's maintenance work. Soon after the F-22 started flying to Utah for repair, the Ogden Air Logistics Center welcomed the 309th Aircraft Maintenance and Regeneration Group, or AMARD, to Hill's mission. More commonly known as the Boneyard and stationed in Arizona, the AMARG was the storage site for thousands of airframes from most military branches, NASA, and our allied partners. This unit also conducted and still accomplishes depot maintenance and parts reclamation to support legacy aircraft that are still in the Air Force. Combat operational units assigned to Hill Air Force Base, like the 3D 8th Fighter Wing, 419th Fighter Wing, and 729th Air Control Squadron, security forces, and explosive ordnance disposal personnel were on constant deployment rotations to support warfare efforts. As Hill Air Force Base passed into another decade, the 2010s, the installation continued what it started more than 70 years prior, a crucial role in depot repair, supply, combat operations, program management, and training. Missions over this past decade that continue today are varied and include weapon system maintenance from fighters to software to ICBMs, the ICBM directorates that provide weapons system lifecycle support for the Miniman 3 and its replacement called GBSD, engineering support for several Air Force aircraft and munitions, weapons testing and training on the Utah Test and Training Range, and the recently established fifth generation fighter combat operations. In September 2013, the depot also assumed maintenance responsibility for the Air Force's newest fifth generation fighter, the F-35 Lightning II. F-22 depot maintenance prior to this time took place at two locations, one being Hill Air Force Base. It was during this decade that all F-22 depot work consolidated on this installation because of the savings it would bring to the program in the long term. In terms of ICBM upkeep, Hill Air Force Base continued to play an integral role with this nation's land-based nuclear deterrence. Hill depot personnel continued the mission of maintaining the Minuteman III weapon system. What started as a simple bombing and gunnery range in Wendover, Utah in World War II grew into the largest block of overland contiguous special use airspace within the continental United States. The Uter encompasses 12,000 square nautical miles in Utah's West Desert and is a Department of Defense asset that provides an ideal location for test and evaluation of weapons for all branches of service and our allied partners. For example, the Uter is used in a training capacity for air-to-air -air combat, air-to-ground inert and live practice bombing, cruise missile testing, and gunnery training. It also provides a vast area of realistic terrain for test and training scenarios to ensure the warfighter on the ground is prepared to deploy at a moment's notice. The Uter is directly supported by the men and women of Hill Air Force Base.
From a combat operations perspective, F-35 integration began with the 3D8 Fighter Wing and the 419th Fighter Wing in 2015 as they became the first operational active and reserve wings to fly the Air Force's newest fifth generation fighter. Now, both these units stand fully mission capable with this groundbreaking fighter platform and have deployed across the globe with it to support combat operations. Hill Air Force Base today remains active in supporting the warfighter in the air and on the ground. From 3,000 acres in 1939, Hill has grown to encompass more than 6,000 acres in both Davis and Weber counties, with management of an additional 900,000 acres throughout northern Utah. Hill Air Force Base is the state's leading single-site employer, currently providing jobs for more than 23,000 military and civilian personnel within the Ogden Air Logistics Complex, the 75th Air Base Wing, 3D8 Fighter Wing, 419th Fighter Wing, Air Force Nuclear Weapons Center, Falcon Hill National Aerospace Research Park, and various other tenant organizations. From its overarching mission of depot maintenance to the myriad of additional yet crucial operations such as engineering, ICBM support, F-35 ops, parts supply, and more, Hill Air Force Base and its workforce have played a crucial role in defending the nation and supporting its warfighters for more than 80 years. Hill Air Force Base stands ready to continue that role for many years to come.